Welcome to the map West Mnet in BFME one on the page 2.22 for a video commentary between good and evil in an El Clasico matchup just like in the films between Isengard and Rohan. I mean the peasants against Uruks, Theodin against Saruman. You can't get more nostalgic than that, you know? The peasants are marching forward. They are drafted. Uruk will opening for Aizen. He was captured in this settlement over there. And also this one. And now he's trying to protect these two settlements. Very important. And this peasant is... Oh my god. <laughs> Oof. You know, that's not the best start into the game. That's not the best start into the game. And here around this location, we have the peasants fighting against the Uruks. And he's trying to beat the Uruks into the trolley. And also he needs to be careful with this tro Uruks. Troll is super fast when he's able to charge. So you need to make sure that he's not able to see you. And the peasants were able to get through. But again, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, always bet your money on the Uruks. In the meantime, uh, Mary was able to make it to the spot. And now he's going to draw the sword and creep this goblin there. And eventually, yeah, exactly. He's going to recruit peasants from the farm. And the peasants coming from the farm will be supporting the Mary by creeping this one. If a good start for Isendor, he was not getting damaged at all. All the settlements are still remaining and the Uruks are able to kill the peasants over and over again. Very important. And he was also using the War Channel offensively to destroy these two farms from his opponent. You know, that's going to delay the stable quite a bit. And his horses will be super delayed upon the field. Again, the early game is the most important stage of the game in any matchup. And doing this will kind of... And delay the mid game of your opponent and without horses Rohan can't really do too much against Aizen you know so the creep was taken by Rohan he's a level 2 peasant now that's pretty powerful and also Mary has to be somewhere around yeah Mary is leading the peasant army in the front level 2 and he was able to buy the settlement over there with the Uruks and most importantly those two lumber mills have been untouched since the beginning of the game um, but as he keep as he keeps uh, you know pretty much bringing more and more Uruks, he has already the Uruk pit at level two. Now he needs to get some Berserk up on the field to counter this level two peasant and Mary. Super important, and that's gonna be the first creep Eisen will be taking now with the Uruks. The stable just built up. The first Rohirrim is gonna join the battlefield pretty much at this exact time. And the question is, what will he be doing? You know. The Lumber Mill was saved, Hobbit was able to get cloaked, and they were not able to bring the Hobbits to Isengard. Now the base from Isen will be filling up slowly but surely over time, he will have full base very very soon. With 3 Lumber Mills, he will get the third one around this location, he will also get more wood bonus, making the structures overall cheaper. And that's very important for the evil faction industry, gonna be also super super helpful. And now with the Berserker and Pikeman combination, he can even move forward to this layer at the bottom right side. And the Hobbit was able to get this cloaked. Protect your workplace. Protect your workplace. Oh my god. Mary is on hat trick, boys. On rampage. His damage not bad, actually, against Lumber Mill. And he was able to get cloaked again. <laughs> the creep was taken by Rohan, the ward layer. But he can't contest us. There are pipemen around. That's gonna be the creep now taken by Aizen. That's pretty good. And also he's planning to take this creep around this location, but there are some peasants who were able to see this, and now they should be easily able to contest. That's what makes the matchup kind of difficult for Aizen, that Rohan is able to do that, that Rohan is able to bring more and more peasants up on the field, which are super cost efficient, cheap, but also a great counter to the pikemen, which kind of forces the Isengard player to go for Sharku or for the Valk Riders. The creep now will be taken by, Isenga, uh, by Rohan. Also, the money will be taken by Rohan. And now we have two and a half power points already for future, the Rohan player. That's pretty good. And he has still, uh, you know, some creeps left on the map. West Mnet, we have still the two troll creeps remaining up on the field in the middle of the map, which can be easily creeped by two horses. But unlike the Gondor Citadel, Rohan Citadel is not able to shoot. So you need to be careful. You can really bring them to your castle. If you do, how are you planning to kill them, you know? Ah, ooh, ah, ooh. Okay. Full base for Aizen, finally. And uh, we have Armory built up for Rohan. He's gonna go for the heavy armor first. And now he's trying to creep this with the Rohirrim. 
And the other one hitting me is gonna take down the lair. I actually wanna see this. Oh, maybe Lords can get the last hit. Nah, he was trying it. And now, what? Bringing them to the <laughs> to the bees. Okay. Ooh, what a hit, bro. No. The armor is able to shoot, but it's not getting hella damage, you know? And it can shoot through the structures too. It has a range. So you need to fight around it. You need to dance around the rosy around this location. You need to dance around like this, you know? But the fact that the troll is able to stall so much time for Aizen, you know, it's pretty good. It's an evil creature after all. And also Aizen is an evil faction, you know? Oh my god. <laughs> He's causing problems. He's causing problems. Ooh, son. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's evil, bro. <laughs> Finally, is dead. One hour later. Okay, Lords. In the meantime, trying to creep the uh, the remaining creep, the lair on the left side in the middle, and he will get to level three if he is able to do that. If also Sharku up on the field. Sharku, a great hero when it comes to fight against peasants, super strong. We have even heavy armor on those peasants, but it's not a big deal because Sharku can just trample them anyway, right? So the outpost will be taken by Rohan. At the top left side, that's pretty good. And also this Lambert Mill is under the control from the Isengard player Drake. Forge Bleeds and the Heavy Armor Purchase, didn't go for the banner. Just yet he's gonna bring some upgraded peasants now to the spot at the bottom side. But you need to also get give them the Heavy Ar um, the Forge Bleeds to just kill the Berserker way way faster. In the meantime, Beast Rush is happening. Oh, beautifully done, actually. He was able to destroy the Uruk Pit, destroy the Furnace, and keeps going now. The Furnaces will not hit level 2 anytime soon. Charku fighting against the Alvin Summon. Heal is going to be used. Charku has splash damage. He's able to hit multiple targets at once with one single swing of his sword. But remember, he is not able to get dismounted. He's always mounted. Beautiful trample into the Alvin Alliance special summon. One more beautiful trample. Getting to level 3. Level 6 is the power spike we are looking for. Only two more levels missing to unlock the My Work is Hungry, which will make him to a very strong duelist. So he will get for a short duration 100% more damage and 30% more armor. He can easily fight in a one-on-one -on -one situation against Lords, for example. He's gonna become super tanky and super beefy. And also the splash damage is super handy because when you can use against combos, for example, you dive in, use this ability, and then you basically hit. The combos are always clumped. Ooh, son! Sharku plus the um, the Palantir. Very well done, actually. Killing a very highly leveled horse battalion there. Super nice. Here up on the field. The King of Rohan has been finally recruited. Where was Gondor when West Emnet fell? That's the big question, because Aizen is taking over the game. Lourdes, level 3. That means whenever he's able to cripple the enemy Theodin, Theodin will be dead, you know? He can't get away from this situation. He will get crippled, Lourdes will draw the sword, go into the melee range, use Carnage, and take him out. Even two heals can't save him. That's not possible. Good base for Aizen. But you need a bit more Pikeman Warcry the combination, super important. Lourdes. Ah, uh, the war chant there won't really do too much. It was a bit too late. And the Rohirrim will be able to clean this up, no problemo. Theodin is level 1. And also smart move from him to use always the whole crown stance on Theodin. Because Theodin is one of those heroes you don't want him to auto-engage on anything. Like a drummer troll, for example. Like these heroes or units are mainly there to support the allied units around them. And they are not there for fighting because they are not very strong fighters anyway. They don't deal a lot of damage. They are not very tanky. They die very quickly. And for that reason, it's important to put the whole ground stands on those units. You don't want them to fight, you know? The outpost will be taken down by the Rohirrim warriors. No problemo. Sharku is recovering up over time. Almost level 5. Uruk pit level 2. Now this time built up in the behind, in the back of the base. It will be difficult or more, more difficult to reach and destroy this Urupit now. For Rohan. Lourdes is looking, hunting. And Rohan is gonna make the transition now into the archer range. So the plan is to get now the Rohirrim archer units upon the field. Rohan is the best lead game faction actually in the game when it comes to fight for the map control. No faction can compete with Rohan's speed. And speed is power. 
I'm gonna tell you that much. Speed is power, boys. So you're having Rohirrim Archer up on the field, which are able to counter the horses, and also the pikemen will make it so getting map control against Rohan, against a good Rohan, is gonna be super, super difficult thing to do. But the main weakness of Rohan is the lack of resources. Rohan needs actually a lot of cash, a lot of time to get to the strong spot of his um, of the power you are looking for, you know? So you need like 20 minutes to get all of that stuff. You need Theodin, Eoma, you need Rohirrim Warriors, you need Shields, Heavy Armor, Forge Blades, you need Archer Range, you need to get three Archers, then Fire Arrow, demolish it, make Rohirrim Archer. That's gonna be super time consuming and also a lot of money has to be invested into this. Isengard can spike a bit faster. You know, each faction has, is built different. And they are unique in their own way. I mean, good map still for Aizen. I like it. Lourdes making it to the spot at the bottom right side. Might go for the outpost control. The Yeoman Archer are coming for the outpost control on the other, on the other side. Charco is super low. Has to be super careful. And you can't fight this. Ooh, but they can. There is no Orcon indeed, Legoras. Okay. Heavy armor purchased, fire all purchased, banner purchased, and the last remaining upgrade, the Forge Blades, about to be purchased. He has also Saruman upon the field. Lourdes. I mean, you see Theoden is always keeping the keeping the distance. Oh my god, he's he might be in trouble actually. It's a 2v1 situation. 3v1 situation now. Oh, can't keep chasing down. Saruman is here. Don't touch my servant, Lourdes. Kaboom! And Lourdes will be able to survive this. Level 4 Lourdes. Only one more level missing for the ultimate power spike. And you see, when you get Lourdes in Saruman, Lourdes level 5, and then you have like 2-3 combos with Warchant, nobody can actually fight against you. Like, your enemy has to have a much stronger and more army than you to be able to fight against you. Like, you having Warchant and uh, uh, the Lourdes leadership combination makes you deal heavy damage. You can burst down heroes and units, even horses, in a few seconds with this combination. And whenever somebody is diving to you, let's for example talk about trolls, then you have your Saruman, and who, who is always going to be a threat with his warm tongue. So it's safe to say that in some situations it's even better to not use it at all. Like you not using it already creates so much pressure on your opponent, you know, because he knows it's available. It drives him crazy, bro. Just hold it, you know, don't use it unless you know you can land it, you know. Against Mordor, it's the key to victory. Mordor rushing to you with trolls, you steal them all and you basically win the fight. And out of that fight, you can even win the game. Oh, but this army is looking scary to me, boy. Ooh, uh, that's a lot of damage. Level 3 Furnace going down like this. That's going to be a big ouchie. That will hurt the eco from Aizen quite a lot. And now, now he has to rotate. You see the dilemma that I was talking about? The speed differential. You know, that he's able to do that and Aizen can't really punish him for that. That's why you need to siege him as soon as possible. You know, you need to bring the siege weapons to his base. And whenever he does that, you can punish him by going to his castle. But you can't follow him. That's not possible. You have only the option either siege him or sit in your base with all your army to defend yourself. But there is no middle ground. You can't do what he's doing. Like, look around this area, which will not give you any advantage. Whenever you then rotate, he can just punish you by taking down your outpost, you see? Like, you can't defend both sides at the same time. That's not possible. I mean, you, this guy needs to use the speechcraft over and over again. It's pretty much free experience. There is no need to save it, you know? Hidden is level 2. That's pretty good. I like it. Every hero but Charco has been killed before. Aizen doesn't seem to be super rich. We have almost 6 power points for Rohan. And we have um, the Freezing Ring available for Isengard. Right 
Oh, but Lourdes is coming from the other side. Zooming in Lourdes. And Lourdes catch him, actually. Now, what is Lourdes doing, bro? Oh my god, he's gonna die. What is he doing? He's hungry for Theorin, bro. Oh my god, he's gonna get in, in safety. Theorin is shooting in a good spot. And the cripple won't connect, and Theorin will get in safety. That's good. Warped has been built up. And now he has the Saruman with another army at the outpost. And I think he wanna start sieging now with the Ballista. But you see, Rohan is always scouting this. He doesn't wanna give him the chance to get to his base. And the Ballista is being under attack by the Rohirrim Archer. So, there comes the Great Company summon on the Valkyders. And they need to now deal. The damage from the Elves is not bad when there is Theoden around them. He deal then 40% uh, more damage. To Ballista. And now he's coming from the behind, you see? Oh my god. Now there is no Lourdes, bro. There are two combos. I don't know what that one actually. There comes the end summon. Ooh, he stole two of the ends, only not all of them actually. The Ballista, and he's going for the Siege Wars, you see? And he's trying to stall, and by time, he doesn't want to be sieged anytime soon. And he will be able to destroy one of the Ballista. There comes a blast from Saruman. He's trying his best to keep Rohan checked, but it's easier said than done. There is um, a Lourdes coming from the other location, but he might be exposed here. He has no backup. The backup is way too far away, and Lourdes will pay with his life for his mistake. And the ends are going to war trampling time, boys. Oh my goodness. Uh, Holy guacamole, one ballista was able to survive it, but the Ains have demolished the Uruks just like in the films, you know? And after this battle, what just happened at the outpost at the bottom right side, Rohan was able to get, like, collect three power points in total. Yes, he lost a bunch of stuff, but I think it's totally fine. And uh, Eisen is up to eight power points. Now, again, the money differential is massive. Um, but Rohan is still good map control, you know, level 3 farm over there, level 3 farm over there, bunch of level 3 farm in the castle. He also went for the Grand Harvest on the farms to get a bit uh, more money. That's like the lack of uh, resources for Rohan, uh, but he will compensate it with the Grand Harvest on his farms. That's pretty good. And he needs to make sure to protect his level 3 farms. They give you a lot of value, a lot of re revenue, and keeping them protected is super important. Now, Eisen needs to go for the siege one more time. Remember, his Lourdes got killed before. Level 4 Lourdes has revived them of 2 minutes and 30 seconds. But he will be there very, very soon. Kirden is now level 3. Only one more level missing for the Glorious Charge moment. That's pretty good. I like it. And the beast is super open for a potential invade, right? He has only two level 3 furnaces, so that means the beast from Eisen is not that durable either. But I think Rohan is going to commit um, to the outpost. You see, he's doing the exact same thing, surrounding his opponent from both the sides and going exclusively for the Siege Warwicks, which will be once again destroyed. What a beautiful micro, actually. That has to be tilting for Isengard player, you know? <laughs> this has to be super tilting, what he's doing. But it's exactly what he's supposed to do. And it's so fun to watch this guy playing this like this, you know? I like the micro. I like the decision making. And also the macro, you know? And all of that kind of delaying Isengard to advance in the game. He's kind of checked. He can't advance. He is in a loop situation. He needs to find the solution to this. He needs to bring more army to the spot, which will make his base vulnerable. But whenever he leaves the outpost like this, he will lose it. So another Rohirrim, and now the whole outpost will be taken down, and Eisen has to rethink his plan and rethink a new strategy. You know, he's now going for the for the for the siege works in the main castle. It's a solution to the problem, and that means he needs to now walk a very long but also dangerous distance from his own castle all the way to the enemy castle, which will give Rohan enough time to commit to the siege weapons. All he needs to do, really, is destroy the siege weapons over and over again. But there comes another beast rush from Rohan, and another level 3 furnace will be taken down. Now, you will replace this level 3 furnace with a level 1 furnace, but it gives you 23 versus 16. That's a 7 resource differential, which is massive. Okay, it's a lot. And of course, it's also way squishier. It's a it's um, two thousand health versus five thousand health. You know, 
Okay. Yoma, up on the field. Ooh, but the Rohirrim Arch is super big against fire arrows. Don't trample into this, bro. The, you see, when you combine the, the pikemen with the crossbowmen, they have like the revenge damage. If you trample into them, it will be a big ouchie there, you know? If the Alvin summon for the for the next time. Demolish the structures in time. He's gonna steal the Alvin summon with the with the warm tongue. And not demolishing the statue will give us a lot of power points to Isengard play Drake. He's up now to 12 power points in total. Saruman is actually level 7. Only one more level is missing for the Villa of Saruman for the healing. And uh, future, the Rohan player is up to 6 power points in total. He needs only 4 power points in a quarter to unlock his Offbreaker army, the army of the dead. Spear throw, nice. And you, you gotta do this over and over again. I mean, he went for Elma super late. Um, if the game goes on for the next 5 minutes, he might be able to do that. But Elma is overall not a bad choice. Because you can put him next to the Rohirrim Archer and he can passively level up too. And when, when you fight against uh, the enemy heroes, you can spear throw them. Darkness is closing in on him, boys. Like, pretty much the same situation. The revenge damage from the pikemen. If you trample into them, that's gonna hurt you. That's gonna hurt you big time. Hope to men. And if also Aragorn upon the field, will he go for the Anduril Sword though? That's a big question. When he's that close to the AOD, I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that he shouldn't do it. It will just slow him down big time. Two power points uh, will have to be invested to get that. Almost seven power points in total for Rohan. Very close to the AOD. I mean, I like this game, boy. I hope you guys also enjoyed this. I mean, thanks to the Bifemi Arena, by the way, you can also download the Bifemi Arena and also join the multiplayer games yourself um, by downloading the all-in-one launcher, the Bifemi launcher, in the description down below. Outpost will be recaptured by Aizen one more time with a huge Aizen army. 15 power points versus 7 power points. Now, when we reach this point of the game, it's super important for Aizen to control the whole map, out, whole outpost. And on the map West Mnet, we have four outposts in total. That's a lot. And keeping them all protected is also easier said than done. This outpost giving you also a couple of resources. He's gonna go for the end summon. Where though? Ah, he summoned the ends here. I'm blind actually. And the Ents were not able to generate a lot of power points to Rohan, the Warchant, and the level 5 combos. You see, level 5, level 5, these two level level 4, these combos are hitting like an absolute track and destroying the Ents, you know, which main weakness of the Ents is Fire Rose. 9 power points and we have 17 and a half. It's pretty, actually it's dead even in the power points department. You know, they are pretty close, both of them, to both Balrog and AOD. But the outpost will be taken down. I like the way he's utilizing the full strength of the Rohan army, knowing that in an all-out fight he would lose, but because there is no siege until now, he could avoid the army from Isengard until now. And it's already a super late game. Now he's going for the main beast. I believe the main goal here from Rohan is to get the remaining power points he needs to unlock his uh, AOD, which can be used to defend. Smart move here from Aizen to hard focus down Theorin. Nine power points in total collected. One more power point is missing. But Aizen is going inside the jeans, boys. Oh my god, he's going in there. Now Rohan is attacking from all every side. And Aizen is not demolishing towers. He's feeding power points to his opponent. And Eod is unlocked. Eod is unlocked. He's gonna summon it. Yes, sir. What a play, man. What a play. Knowing you can't win the fight. Go for the base. Collect power points. What a beautiful micro. The Balrog will be summoned, but it has no use. All outposts under control from Rohan. And Aizen knows he can take the W and will be leaving the game. Rohan Show. Let's call it Rohan Show. A phenomenal performance by both the players. But Rohan's decision making and his engagement, disengagement was actually top tier. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like, subscribe. See you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.